Hi, this is another short video in the Random Linux Stuff playlist, and this one is on mounting file systems using systemd. As you probably know, to mount file systems at boot time, we typically use the Etsy FSTab file, or at least most of us have been doing so for a very long time. There's nothing wrong with that, except that sometimes it might lead to some problems. If, for example, a file system or a disk is no longer present in the system, but there's still an entry in the Etsy FSTab file, or there's an error in the FSTab syntax, for example, your system will then not boot properly anymore, which could be regarded as a kind of a problem. To avoid this potential problem, we can now use systemd to mount file systems at boot time. This can be realized by creating a new mount service in which we specify some of the arguments we would also use in the fstab file. But now the system won't have any problems booting if something changes in the configuration. In the case of using systemd, the file system will simply not be mounted and cause no further harm. Basically, we only need one small unit file which reflects the name of the mount point. This is an important feature, so the name of the unit file should reflect the mount point. If the name of the unit file does not reflect the mount point, you will get an appropriate error when you try to start the service. So what we'll do is we create a simple x2 file system on a tiny disk, create a mount point in MNT, and we'll create the unit file in the system directory of libsystemd. We enable and start the service. So I'm logged into Rocky and I apologize that I'm logged in as root. So first we run lsblock to list our block devices. And we see a couple of available disks and we use the first one, which is sdb. And we create a file system on the disk using mkfs, which will by default create an x2 file system. And when we run lsblock once more, we see that the file system is of the type x2. Now, to avoid problems with regards to unpredicted device name changes, we could use the UUID to mount the file system. But let's use a label instead. So we create a label in the file system using e2label, like this. And, of course, the label can be anything we want to. But let's call it small. Next, we create a mount point in slash mnt. And we mount the file system. And we check it. And then we unmount the file system again and we're back to where we started. Now let's create the unit file. The quickest way to do that is maybe by using an existing mount service. So we list them and then we pick the TMP mount service as the template. Again, the name of the unit file should reflect the mount point. So we have to make sure that it's called mnt-small because the mount point is slash mnt slash small. Now let's edit the contents of the file. So we change the description of the unit file and we get rid of all the other stuff because we don't really need that in this example. Now here comes the interesting stuff. Now we need to define what we want to mount, which would be the device with the file system that contains our label. And then we need to give it the mount point we created and uh, the file system type, which would be x2. And finally, the options. Let's stick with the defaults. Now, so instead of putting all of this information in the fstab file, we put it in the unit file. And the last line will get the multi-user target in our case. So in the old system, this would be something like run level 3. So we enable and start the service, and then we check whether the file system has been mounted, and that's a success. Then we stop the service, and we'll see that the file system will be unmounted, and that's correct, and then we finally, for the final test, we will reboot the system. We wait a bit and we log in again, and we run the df command, and we see that the file system is mounted. So we're very happy and we're done.